Okay, everybody watching the the was live. Just want everyone to come on live, and then we'll get started. We're talking intermittent fasting today. <clears throat> Hey everybody, who's joining us? Just waiting for everyone to join us live and then we're going to get going. Uh, give us a comment if you're live now so I can see that you can hear me. Make sure the sound's good. Um, Facebook is over here, Instagram's here. I can see you guys um, on Instagram. Thanks for the thumbs up, Chris. Just while we're going, I've got the live coaching, um, sorry, the coaching, um, 12 week coaching program starting soon. There's only seven places left as of now. So we'll see what happens at the end of this. Uh, if you're interested in it, click the link. In fact, I'm going to pin the link while we're waiting for everybody. that link there hey to everybody on um, instagram quite a few of you that's awesome you guys won't be able to see the link on there oops i spun you around people are wanting to come live with me a little bit apprehensive like that if i know you i'll definitely come live but if i don't know you um, we'll have to do it next time. Shoot me a message if you want to come live with me and ask a question. That's cool. Okay, so intermittent fasting. Um, thanks everybody that's already joined the group for the next 12 weeks. We're going to be going through a lot of coaching stuff, which is absolutely awesome. This will be covered in it. All of those stuff, the possible questions you can possibly have will be in it as well. Um, so you've seen the post on Facebook. You've seen the post on Instagram. Um, you've seen the post on the gym page. Me talk about how fasting got me lean or how fast it got me shredded. Unfortunately, it wasn't fasting. It wasn't intermittent fasting that got me shredded. It was the calorie deficit. So I lied a little bit, but we're gonna go into that a little bit now and explain why. So we're continuously playing this game of calorie balance. Um, there's so many people joining us now, I should wait a little bit longer, but we'll, um, we'll crack on anyway. Um, if you've got any questions, don't forget, shoot us a message. Um, Get them answered as soon as possible and if any questions get asked during this then uh, if you don't get your question answered then shoot me a message okay so we're always playing this game of calorie balance so it wasn't intermittent fasting that got me shredded it was a calorie deficit okay so remember that that's going to be the theme of this entire thing so we're playing a game of calorie balance all day every day 24 7 even the weekend even when we go out partying we're still playing the game of calorie balance so if you're in a calorie deficit, which means you are eating less calories than your body needs, you're going to lose fat and lose some weight. If you're eating more calories than your body needs, even beers, even chocolate, even cake at the weekend, you're going to gain fat. Okay, So you have to have this balance going on on a daily basis every single day to get this right. It doesn't mean that you have to always eat like nothing. It's not about that. It's about balancing it. Okay? So it's that simple. But what it is, is it's a tactic of keeping things in keeping things in check on a daily basis, sticking to it and being able to uh, do it in a really balanced manner without being too obsessive. Um, and that's where the, the tactics or the strategies come in place that I'll be going on about in the 12 week coaching for most of you guys who are already on that. Um, we go on about it when we do seminars, all our videos, all our content, all the coaches here at Empowered Fit, they go on about the same thing and it's about strategies to help you stick to it in the long term because that's the hardest thing, okay? So intermittent fasting or any type of fasting is simply a strategy to help you stick to dieting. It's not, it doesn't have to be strict. It doesn't have to be a, a specific thing, but it can help you stick to the diet. Okay. So most people will look at intermittent fasting as a very specific thing, which means five, two diet or 16, eight diet or have some specific numbers. It's not about that. That's not how we should be using the, the intermittent fasting approach. Um, most people would miss breakfast out 
or they would miss a day eating out. But it really means just missing some time during the day or having a longer break from eating. Does that make sense? So I'm going to go into the science later on, but I'll talk about what I personally do, um, which works really well, is I will choose, I choose to track my calories. If you choose to do that, that's great. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, you don't have to do that, but that's a method. So I will track my calories. I know for fat loss for me, I will need uh, 2,600 roughly calories per day. <clears throat> and I'll simply wake up between 4.30 a.m. and 8 a.m., depending on what's going on. Uh, on my day-to-day -day life, and I will then not eat until about 1 p.m. So 1 p.m. hits, I'll have my first meal, and then um, I'll, I'll have another meal around about 7, 8, or 9 p.m. So what that means is out of that 2,600 calories, which for me being a, in a calorie deficit, which means I'm going to lose body fat, will mean I can have two massive, huge, huge meals <laughs> of 1,300 uh, 1, calories. So, does that make sense? Does that help a little bit for you guys? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look for the questions because I can see quite a few already um, turning up across the different social medias. Um, and I'm going to get back to it. So, if you've got any questions, post them now. Um, otherwise, if you haven't and it's you're watching the recording, then just post it and I'll, I'll write the comment or I'll... I'll talk about it in a different way okay cool so thanks for the questions keep them coming thanks for the likes so what that's going to do that 1300 calories in two meals per day for me you can use the same approach if you want is it's going to make me super satisfied with their meals it means i'm likely to stick to it in the long term um i'm a super super busy person which means i've got less focus on food so you're going to be a bit more productive in the day you're not preparing meals all, all day long, so I'm literally preparing one in the middle of the day, one at night time, that's it, done. So I've just seen loads of people join us. So yeah, we're talking intermittent fasting and how a calorie deficit is what actually does it. Um, so you don't have to follow my approach. You could, uh, if you track your calories, that's great, as I said before. What you could do is simply miss a meal out during the day. So if you've got three meals going on, which most people have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or whatever, if you miss one of them, one of them out, guess what happens? You stop eating as many calories during the day. And it's basically as easy as that. If you're not tracking calories, it's gonna help you do it that way as well. Um, so it's not gonna do any magic, really. But we're gonna go into the science a little bit now as well. So I've got a question here. Bob Lauren. So Lauren said, I go on Instagram. Jesus Christ, that's strong. I've got some cordial in it. How do you initially um, stick with the hook? Um, how do you initially get, get used to the hunger, basically, if you miss breakfast out? So it's a bit of a mindset thing. So hunger being a natural body reaction. But for some people, we'll see it as a real negative thing, like, oh, shit, I feel hungry. What's going to happen? But really, it's just a, the body's response to going, oh, I need some food. And if you can think of it in a different way of like that, that will firstly help. Um, secondly, it's it's you get used to it as well. So if you were to cut your breakfast out, you'll get used to it. Um, and you could maybe, maybe, maybe go into it a little bit slower in the beginning you could have breakfast at 10 a.m like you just said then rather than 7 a.m and that's a, that's a good start um you don't always have to just miss out breakfast you could miss out lunch you could miss out your evening meal um you could just find that you're not hungry at some point during the day and choose that window to not eat so for example i might not eat um i might eat breakfast at 7 a.m just because i'm really hungry and then I will then maybe not eat until 9 p.m. So I've had a big gap in the middle of the day. Um, it's not the standard approach to intermittent fasting, but it's window eating or taking a section of the day out of your uh, your day-to-day -day life where you're not eating. Um, okay, cool. So another question. Um, so hormonal changes from intermittent fasting. The question is a bit more detailed than that. Um, 
and it was also about female adaptation to hormonal um, changes from intermittent fasting. So, um, I've just seen a question over there as well, I'll get that in a second. So, intermittent fasting and hormonal changes. So, all of the studies strongly suggest that any adaptation or any positive adaptation with your hormones is associated with the calorie deficit and having a more focus on healthy, um, uh, a healthy approach to your diet or a healthy approach to eating. And usually if you're going to start dieting and intermittent fasting, you're probably going to do other health seeking behavior as well, like eat more fruit and veg, for example. So all of the studies points towards that. And we haven't really got enough evidence yet to say that there's hormonal changes that are positive from intermittent fasting. So people who are selling this as a thing that creates some really good hormonal adaptation and you should do it because better growth hormone and better female uh, hormones, we just have to ignore them. Um, and that's the same for most of the diet industry. It's all bullshit and mostly crap, okay? So um, that was the answer to the hormonal balance really. Um, so any, um, what else was I going to say? Just reading some of your questions. So, um, just going a little bit more into that science was quite interesting. The body has got an amazing homeostatic regulatory system. Okay. So basically homeostasis, it balances itself really, really well. There's not much we can do to change that. The body's super clever and does it all for us. Um, unless your nutrition or your training or your lifestyle factors are way off and you're just being super unhealthy, there's not really much we can do to, to change our hormones to be like more positive, okay? But what we can do is be healthy, eat properly, train, exercise, um, live a better lifestyle, more fruit and veg and stuff like that. That will kind of help us balance it out, making sure we got enough fats and enough proteins and whatnot. So yeah, it's important to, to, to be healthy and that's kind of what we, where we find the body will be more homeostatic and have a good level, okay? Um, so not doing things like juice plusing or, or detoxing or stupid fad diets or cutting like food out of your diet or avoiding foods like and starving yourself that's going to also affect your hormonal balance in a negative way, okay? So we need to stop doing that right away. Um, another question. Any difference between male and female of intermittent fasting? No. Let's move on to the next question. Simple as that. Um, I've got another question here. Rustic pause. Thanks for the question. Um, we sort of do this by accident. We are simply busy and end up being one meal. However, we feel like rubbish and have started doing over two meals. Excellent. So, yeah. Um, going into the one meal, like this person just said, uh, for fat loss, considering a calorie balance, whether you've got your calories in the right level, for fat loss, the studies show us, which I'll post in the, in the video, by the way, afterwards, I can't do it on Instagram, but I will on Facebook, the studies show us that whether we're eating one meal or whether we're eating six meals or three meals for fat loss, it's exactly the same. There is absolutely no difference between one meal or six meals. So all of that bullshit about eat multiple times a day doesn't matter, okay? So we're just we're just looking at how much how much food we're eating on a daily basis. Well, thanks for the comment. So another one is uh, from Hannah. Hey Hannah, um, is there any problems when it comes to energy levels, blood sugar with this approach? Yes and no and depends. It always depends. If you're the type of person that has uh, problems with blood sugar and um, potentially got diabetes or, or insulin insulin resistant and you've been tested for that, then possibly yes, this might be a problem and I would advise you to speak to a physician, uh, speak to your dietitian or, or whatnot. But if you're a regular normal person, um, not saying that if you've got them problems you're not normal, I'm just saying if you're a regular normal person, meaning you've not got any, any issues that the doctors come up with, um, I just have seen someone come in the sounds a bit low. I know, I can't do anything about it. I was going to plug something in, but I've got too many devices. Um, yeah, so blood sugar. It, it, your body's got a lot of stores. So that homeostasis I spoke about before, um, the regulatory system, will sort itself out and will give you energy from the body. You've got 600 carbs 
or 600 grams of carbs, which converts into glycogen, which can give you energy at any moment, at any time during the day. So really the answer is no. Now, if you have low energy from it, it could be a mindset thing. Um, it could be the fact that you think that the food that you're consuming in the morning is going to hit your belly and all of a sudden boom, give you energy. It doesn't. It takes a long time for it to go through the digestive system and give you some sort of um, energy. So don't worry about it, really, unless you've got some sort of um, health uh, health issues. Um, seen Dave Mercer said hello. Hey, Dave. Let's give some of these people a little wave on Instagram. Any more questions on Facebook? Any other Facebook? Okay. Oh, there's one. Um, so the question was, does intermittent fasting affect if you eat the same calories? Um, so yeah, pretty much the answer is if you, if you change from eating five meals a day, having the same calories to eating two meals, no, there's no difference. Um, somebody else just asked uh, hydration. Should they drink in the morning? Um, so thanks for the question. Yes, drink is normal. Um, we need to be hydrated. And really, and a health, for health-seeking people like us, we should be looking to hydrate ourselves with 2.5 to 3.5 liters of water a day. It's a lot, um, but that's kind of what we're going to be doing to detox our body. And if you're not drinking enough water during the day, you're not able to detox properly. And a lot of people are walking around not being healthy and um, not functioning properly with a bit of lethargic, um, lethargia, is that even a word? Um, by not drinking enough water. So, any more questions by anybody that's on live? Um, so, another big question was, how to stop binge eating using, fa um, using intermittent fasting? So, um, I come from a point in my life 15 years ago, most of you will have heard it, uh, if you know my content, where I was following all the latest fad diets, I was listening to PTs who were telling me the wrong thing, I was reading Google, um, I became so scared of food and guilty when I ate any food that I ended up left with nothing but tuna and protein shakes uh, because I thought everything else was bad. Um, and then I would break and my willpower would break from my tuna diet and I would end up binge eating at the weekend. Um, so I'm very experienced in this area. Bear in mind it's 15 years ago. Um, so this is a lot of, we'll be going through this a lot on a 12 week coaching course as well. Um, so if any of you are watching and new and don't know that we're doing that, you can click the link in the description. Um, it's £10 per week for 12 weeks. Uh, I know someone just asked a question about that as well. Um, okay, so moving on from that, the binge eating thing. Um, the key is to firstly, have your calories at the right level. A lot of diets and bullshit things within the industry um, would be would be trying to make us eat super low calories so we get results and we think we've done really well on their diet. People post about it and say they've done really well on, um, and let's think of one, Juice Plus, they put on there, I've done really well on Juice Plus, it's great, ate nothing, ooh, lost two stone in two, in, lost two stone in a day. It's all bullshit because then you end up binge eating and, and don't post about that bit and everyone thinks Juice Plus is absolutely great when it's not, it's shit. So um, that's the first thing is getting your calories right. We'll be talking about that as well. Um, and if you want to shoot me a message or comment, I can work your calories out for you. Um, the next thing is to understand, this is to stop the binge eating, is to understand there is no good or bad food. Um, when we consume food, our body seizes it, sees it as carbs, fats, proteins, and fiber, micronutrients. It doesn't see it as a freaking donut. It doesn't know that it's a donut. Only we know it's a donut and know it's bad. So it's to understand that there's no good or bad food. There's not enough time to go into that today, but this is a lot of what our content is about. It's helping you have a healthy relationship with food. Um, eating less often will help a person who's got binge eating issues because um, there's less focus on food and you get a chance to have bigger meals. Um, so it could be good for that. But the bad thing about it is if you end up eating, uh, taking a long break from eating, you could end up doing the same behavior as before, which would be binge eating by having that binge, which isn't good. 
So it's all a balancing game, and there's a lot into binge eating that I can't go into here. I could do a whole video on that, which I might do one day. Um, question just popped up then. Um, M, I'm presuming that is. Hey, M, I hope everything's okay. Um, does green tea count as part of that fluid intake? Yep, of course. Um, just be aware that green tea does have caffeine in it, so don't have it at night time. Um, another question just popped up is, is it better to train um, or exercise fasted? Ooh, big answer needed here, but we'll do it quickly. So, basically, it makes absolute need no difference whatsoever. As I said earlier on, we've got 600 grams roughly, depending on the weight of the person, of carbs waiting as fuel to be used at any moment for exercise or movement or to run away from someone that was trying to chase you, okay? You don't have to be fed. It's gonna make little difference to fat loss, okay? It's gonna make little difference to muscle gain as well. Um, so really, it goes, it all boils down to preference. If you decide that you feel better training fasted, you train, you train fasted. If you have to train fasted because you need to train at five or 6 a.m. and then go to work, you train fasted. It would be a good idea though um, to probably eat some, some sort of protein um, meal. I won't say high protein, I'd say between 30 and 40 grams of protein after a training session. Um, but really there isn't any post workout window you just kind of train uh, so you just eat your fuel uh, during the day your body knows when to use it um, what else um, to do with fasted cardio or fasted activity in the morning with fasted if you do cardio in the morning which is a big thing and you think it's going to burn more fat it will but your body has a magic um, homeostatic system, uh, a respiratory exchange ratio, we call it, which will balance the calories out over a 20, uh, the calorie usage or the fat burning over a 24 hour period. So if you lost more fat doing the activity in the morning, you'll just kind of gain it back in the afternoon or the nighttime and it will balance out. So there's not really any difference whatsoever. It's like having a full tank of fuel in your car. You do the, do the journey or you do the fasted cardio and then you fill up with a five, you do put five pound of fuel in your car. It doesn't make any difference. Basically like that. So I'm gonna post these um, loads of studies in it anyway afterwards. Uh, any more questions? There's a new comment over here. Um, what's, uh, Keith Chapman, hey Keith. Um, what's the best way to plan a diet around a night out? Yes, good question. Um, someone asked me this um, in my uh, comments actually. So how to have a night out and use intermittent fasting. So if you think about it, how we just spoke, and you're gonna consume your meal at 1 p.m. and at uh, 8 p.m. at night, right? On a night out, or if I'm going out for a meal, I would probably miss breakfast, like I do most days anyway. I would come to my first meal at 1 p.m. and I would probably have a high fiber, high protein meal. So I'd probably have, I don't know, an egg white omelette, maybe with some uh, brown bread or brown toast or something, okay? So your calories are super low, you're getting your protein in there anyway, um, you're getting your fiber in there, you're thinking about some health stuff, and then I wouldn't eat again then. So I might have three to 400 calories, um, and then I would not eat until I went out for the meal, if I was gonna go out for the, a meal. Um, and then depending on how serious you are about fat loss, it all depends on whether you're gonna track or not. So if you're tracking your calories, you carry on tracking your calories and you track your beers as well, okay? So you're not going to be the healthiest by going out drinking, but at least you're going to stay within a calorie balance and you're not going to overconsume. So whatever your calories is set um, at, try and hit that. If you're in fat loss calories, um, you've probably got another 500 on top of that to play with, to go out with, and you've got to stay, to, you're not going to gain any weight really. So for me, that would mean if I'm eating 2,600 for fat loss and I add 500 on, because I don't want to have fat loss that day, I'm not bothered, I'm going out, that would be 3,100. So I could eat, I don't know, 600 in the afternoon and I could have 2,500 to, to go out with. Does that make sense, Keith? Um, so you, you're trying to balance the calories. It's always about calorie balance. Um, that makes sense. Okay, so there's another question over here.
and by M. Actually, there's a few. Um, I think I've missed some. So if I've missed some questions, shoot me a message or just put it, copy and paste it and do it again. Um, how does each uh, how does each individual know how many calories they should be consuming to lose weight? Okay, if um, I have to explain this in a simple way. Normally, I do this in a seminar or I do this in the coaching, um, or the twelve week coaching. But I'll do it quickly now. If you take your activity level, um, <laughs> Joe Ward, just licking the lids of the yogurt still counts calorie intermittent fasting. Yes, it does. Thank you, Joe. I did put troll me in the uh, message, didn't I? No, I didn't. So if um, yeah, so you take your body weight. Uh, in pounds, so it doesn't have to be accurate, and you're going to times by a lifestyle multiplier. So the lifestyle multiplier is 10, 11, or 12. Okay, so if you've got a pen, write that down. Um, but I'm not sure whether you're on the coaching because I don't recognize your username. If, we're in the, if you're in the coaching for the 12 week, this is week one, so don't worry. Um, 10, 11, or 12. Um, 10 is basically if you don't do any activity, like you literally have an office job, you drive to work, and you don't train, you don't exercise. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that would be 2,000 calories, okay? You're gonna times by 11, if you have a um, bit of an active job, and maybe you go to the gym once, okay? So the next thing, so you're gonna times by 11. Um, next thing is 13, um, sorry, 10, 11, 12, 12, so if you are active, so you have a standing job, I stand most of the time all day. Um, I'm running around the gym, screwing things in the wall and whatnot. So I'm active, I walk the dog, so I'm active. And I also train more than two or three times per week. So I'm active, so I would be times it by 13, okay? 12 or 13 is most people. So this is a quite a harsh fat loss number. It's set harsh, so we do something which we're calling um, in the kind of evidence-based world, smash and glide. So you'll be smashing the first few weeks and you'll see fat loss and weight loss happening, which we have all the tools to teach you that, how to, how to see it happening. Um, you would then bring your calories slowly up to the point where you would be losing about 1% per week. Uh, but in the early stages, it'd be quite quick. So when you put them calories into my fitness pal, or when you do that calculation, most people are like, holy shit, that's a lot of calories. But when you start typing in like pizza, um, McDonald's milkshake, and like, I don't know, um, even things like a carb killer bar if you're into the gym or something, um, um, something high calorie, you'll realize how quick it can add up, okay? So the idea is to keep your, hit your calorie number, but change your, um, change your intake, change the way you eat by hitting it, putting it into my fitness pal. That's the first stage. Um, I, the, the coaching is the coaching takes. We, we do a forty-five minute call every um, every week for twelve weeks, so it's it's quite difficult to go into it in one call. Um, anyone questions? But yeah, shoot over there, hit the link, um, and have a little read. There's a video there as well. Um, so um, yes, yeah, says no. Sorry, I'm new to your Instagram. Um, that's okay. There's a lot of people who came over today. I think about 50 people joined today. So hello to everybody that's new. Uh, if you're watching the recording, um, Will Gas Tech. Hey, sorry, obviously don't know your name. Guess your name's not Will. Um, can you build muscle with intermittent fasting as well as fat loss? Very good question. And the answer is yes. Um, the answer is um, uh, the answer is yes and depends. If you're going to be lifting properly, of course, and you're going to be um, using progressive overload. Um, if you are in a low body fat state, we need to make sure we're in a calorie, calorie surplus. Uh, although, of course, you can build muscle in a calorie deficit um, a little bit. Um, but you probably want to be aiming for more than two meals per day, um, just to make sure we're getting enough protein in each meal. Um, really the best way to build muscle or maintain muscle uh, is to have more than three meals per day. Um, so yeah, you need to you need to work on um, doing three, maybe three or three or more meals per day, just to make sure you're getting enough protein in. It could be a protein meal. 
Um, but yeah, you can. Um, people build muscle on just one meal per day. So the body is very clever at partitioning the carbs, fats, and protein into the right place. So you don't need to worry that much. The fitness industry makes us worry. Um, oh, Patrick did the work and you're in the old gym. Cool. I know you are now. <laughs> Cool, any more questions? Just looking through. So loads of you join me. So if you're watching the, you're watching the live afterwards, then um, great, we'll, um, any questions, post it. So someone's, is there an optimal length? Keith Chapman. Okay, so Keith Chapman has just asked, asked another question. Is there an optimal length of time you should do intermittent fasting before switching to another method? It depends and it doesn't matter. Um, when I started off in the beginning of this talk, I was just talking about calorie balance being the most important thing. Um, and we don't really need to worry about our amount of meals we're doing per day. Um, there is no optimal time. It's just a way of eating. Um, calories is king. Calories in versus calories out. So if you're consuming um, more calories than you need, you're gonna gain weight, you're consuming less calories, you're gonna lose weight. And no, there's no optimal time, but I'd definitely just be very relaxed with it. So if you wanna eat breakfast, cause you're hungry that day, you just eat breakfast. Like it doesn't matter. If you miss lunch out then, it doesn't matter. If you have your evening meal afterwards, it doesn't matter. It's about how many calories you're consuming per day. And that's kind of the real answer. Um, hey Dylan, you just asked a question. Is it necessary to, to use supplements? The answer is no and never. Um, the supplements is the smallest um, or the least significant part of health and fitness, even though it's the biggest industry. Um, supplements don't really have a place in nutrition until you've got your, your, your calories right, until you've got your training right, until you're looking at are you eating enough protein on a daily basis? Then at that point, it might be worth putting some supplements in, perhaps protein powder to up your protein level, first of all, uh, and then maybe creatine. And creatine, just take it every day, five gram a day. And that's pretty much it, unless you want to get into the nitty gritty and you're getting your training spots on, you're getting your nutrition spots on, then it might be a good idea to add some supplements in. Until you got all that nailed, and I mean, seven days a week nailed, there's not really really any point to um, to it really, two supplements. Uh, what supplements would I take? Good question. So I take multivitamins just in case. I take, um, I'm just looking at all these people that I've just joined. I take multivitamins just in, ta in, in case. I take uh, creatine. Um, I'll take uh, a pre-workout if I need to pick me up. Uh, before a training session, but only early in the day. I will take um, protein powder, nootropics maybe. Um, I could do a whole video on nootropics. And that's probably it, um, supplement-wise. Um, just seeing any more questions. I've definitely missed a few. If I've missed any then don't hesitate if you, if you type in get it done quick because i'm going to end it in a second the dapper barbershop that sounds cool doesn't it okay lots of questions coming up now thank you um how much calorie surplus do you need for lean muscle gain good question depends first of all we need to know how many calories you need um if you're lean, um, and Katie Jones asked a question over there, I'll get to that in a second. If you're lean and you want to be gaining, there's a calculation you can do, which is take in a very simple calculation. Take your body weight in pounds, times it by uh, um, 13.15, 16, 17, or 18. 15 would be if you just go to the gym, maybe, and you have a sit down job. Um, 16 would be if you've got a stand up job and you go to the gym. Um, um, six, um, 17 would be if you're super active, like a scaffolder, climbing up ladders all day or a builder, and you go to the gym five days a week. 
Um, but it's just a guess. So really you need to do some tests to make sure you're not gaining too quickly. Uh, because the, if you gain too quickly, you gain too much fat and you've got to lose it afterwards. So it becomes a bit more, a bit counterproductive. Um, but it might sound like a lot of calories. So you have to then uh, consider high calorie foods to uh, make, that, make that up. Okay, Katie. Um, is carbs at a certain time bad? E.g. no carbs after 6 p.m. <laughs> that is a, that's a fun question. So this is one of the oldest myths in the industry. Um, and it, it gets, um, gets done to death and people still believe it, which is unfortunate. So the body's really, really clever at storing the food um, for later on in the day, for later on the next day, uh, if, you're eating, um, if you're eating the right amount. Now, if you are eating in a calorie surplus and you're not tracking your calories and you're not considering uh, how much food you're eating in a day, it's quite easy to go over your calories and regardless of whether you eat at 6 p.m. or 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. or 10 p.m., you're going to gain body fat, okay? If you're tracking your calories and you know that you're in a calorie deficit and you're eating at night time, you could eat all your food at 10 p.m. in bed before you go to bed and you won't gain any extra fat if you're in a calorie deficit. There will be zero difference, okay? This is what all the science shows us. Your body is using... Your body is... Um, Metabolism is pretty much doing the same thing all day long. Um, whether you're asleep or whether you're, whether you're lying down, it's still functioning. It's got to fix things that you've been uh, doing all day long. You've been walking around, you've been exercising. Your body's got to do a lot of stuff at nighttime to recover while you're asleep, and it needs calories for that, and it'll be burning it. So really, there's no, not need, there's no need to worry at nighttime. I know people do worry because they think when they consume that food, oh my God, I'm not moving. Don't worry, that's not even a thing. So just forget about it. Just eat when you want to eat, basically. Um, and it all boils down to calories in versus calories out. So how many calories you're eating on a daily basis. Um, another question over there. No. It's literally like some of these questions are, are great, but a lot of questions in fitness are because of the confusion around health and fitness and people trying to make money out of you. Um, it's literally like most of these questions are literally like when you've walked into your bathroom, <clears throat> your sink is overflowing, your plug, um, your plug is in it and it's overflowing and the taps on and you look running around the house looking for what type of cloth to go and get to dry the water up off the floor, but you haven't considered pulling the plug out. So calorie balance is like pulling the plug out of the sink and turning the tap off. Then you can chill out and start cleaning the floor up. That's basically a lot of questions in health and fitness. Um, it's just not your fault. It's the fact that the industry is very confusing. So if you type in, quickly press um, return or whatever it is, send, because I'm just about to finish up. Thanks for your time. Thanks for giving me your Thursday night. And if you do want to come and join me on the coaching, um, click the link uh, in my in my bio. There's another question on there. I won't, join. I won't finish yet. But there's a link in my bio um, on Instagram. And the top one is uh, 12 week coaching. You can go and join, but shoot me, shoot me a message first just to make sure you're super group that's already paid for it. Um, Emma just said, it definitely confused the hell out of me. So many diets out there that contradict each other. So they contradict each other, but they all do the same thing. Every single diet is trying to get you to be in a calorie deficit, and they're hiding the fact that it's just about calories in versus calories out. They literally hide it. <laughs> so they can make money out of you. Let's take um, um, Juice Plus, for example. Drink these two drinks per day uh, and have an evening meal, but be healthy. Oh, well, guess what? You eat less calories. Oh, but you have to buy these drinks. So then when you stop doing it, what happens? You're confused. You eat normal food again. You get fat again. So the idea is that <laughs> you just uh, look at it as a calorie in versus, versus calories out game, and you, the confusion can stop very, very quickly. Um I can see some comments coming up from people who did a seminar here in the gym with me um, uh, two weeks ago, and we had about 20 people. It was great. An hour or an hour and a half, maybe a bit longer, two hours. We went through a lot of this and fixed it really quick, uh, fixed a lot of this confusion really quickly. Um, so yeah, that's what we were doing in the coaching. Um, so thanks for thanks for you who commented saying you're going to join on that. That's awesome. Um, okay, so. 
laughing face off M. Lee says thanks. Thanks, Lee. Um, I don't think there's any more questions over there. I think I'm done. So, for you guys that are on the coaching, this will be the time every Thursday night, seven o'clock. Um, but we can interact because you'll be on the screen with me, so it'll be like a conversation. Um, we'll just have a chat every Thursday and go through all, all of your your coaching problems. Uh, oh, another comment. Kate says thanks. Awesome. Okay, guys. So, any questions, comments, um, let me know. I'll, I'll be there to help you. Um, if you want to share some of your story with me as well, put that in the comments or shoot me a message. That would be awesome. Uh, um, when I hear more about your confusion and uh, what diets you've been doing that are basically bullshit, it just drives me on to do more content like this. So, so keep commenting. Um, so thanks, guys. See you in the next video.